Well, I've got a box. This is really, really light. I'm actually wondering if there's anything in it. Now, I can just uh, gently put you down there, because if I nudge that battery compartment, that's going to shut the camera off. probably going to be thinking when I pull this out of this box, why did I buy one of these when I've already got loads of them? Yep. It is another JSP MaxiLite Navigator, but with a difference. This it's one of their new ones. This is an LED one. It is a photo cell. It has gone off when I put it up to the light. It comes back on when I take it down. Now, a little pokey stick, and I haven't got the key. I have got keys for. Oh, that's a different. No, that's a different bot. That's an iron screw head. Undone. So I've got a bag full of small hexagon keys here. That'll do as a pokey stick. Right. So we've got this is not gonna work, is it? These two holes, I think the bottom one here. The left, right one, I'm not feeling is on off. Yep. On off. Can I? And the other one, just to show you, I'm going to poke it in that hole. You can select between static and flash. Yeah, this is that's why I got this one. Eight pounds. I can bring up JSP's um, website and I think I found it. We'll see what it is brand new. Ah, £8.51 per light. There it is. JSP website. Photos of it. I have got the JSP cone brackets as well. There we 
we go. And I paid eight pounds a post. Of course, I don't think um, JSP will um, sell as a uh, single lamp. It might sell one as a single lamp. They've got all sorts. No. Oh, I see it's a drop down. All sorts of road traffic and barriers. I see spares and accessories for the barriers. Road safety lamps. What have we got under road safety lamps? Ooh, they still do the micro light, the Mark II FNPC. What's that one? 586 inch. Click on description. Does that do anything? No. And an FPC. Yeah, not a lot of uh, Ah, it's got a photo cell. Ah, FPC, flashing photo cell. Ah. Huh. F N so what the hell is F N P C? No photo cell in that one. Hmm. Well, maybe not then. Right. There's another one to the collection. It's exactly the same. I've used the same body. What they've done is just uh, something's not right there. It's missed the hole, I think. Yeah, what I've done is uh, used the exact same body they've always used, and just upgraded it to an LED. Have you got a smart idea? I'd have home for that in the bedroom now. I'm going to take that down from up there and see if I can um, get your footage to a PC. Blah. I've got some, uh, I think some short issues on here. Well, actually, no, I've got a short issue. I've accidentally, it's right down here actually. I've got a resistor contact contacting with a um, capacitor contact. But in I can see another one where I've shorted as well. That's gonna be what the problem is. I've shorted in a couple of places. So if I can sort those out I can get that board to work. Oh the other thing that arrived my bricks for that roof. Here. So, I think today's job 
I don't have a clean up in here. I do believe I've got all the parcels. I don't believe I've got any more parcels to arrive. Hang on, come on, Boulevard. Enough here to do the roof. No. Bricks. It has all seventy odd pieces, I think it is said. Should have enough mixed with the these bits I've already got. I should have enough there here to uh, do it. Although I was actually hoping for some for more of these larger bricks than anything else. get these few bricks. Um, like, if I have to order some more 1x4s, like, or 2x4s like this, I should say, and I'll have to... Right, there's that row done. Although, I I think I could get away with the one by twos in the next couple of rows. Really, I'd have wanted to use one by twos, two by twos. Really, though, I'd have wanted to have used uh, more, <laughs> more one by fours. Then again, I haven't got a lot up there to do, have I? Hmm. Actually. With a bit of modification to that roof, I could use those one by two or those two by twos. Which, well, I keep calling them one by twos. <sighs> I think there is a couple in here. Yeah, there is. Not the lamp. I'm gonna um, I'll take the house out of there. So I'm going to have to modify um, the roof and whatnot. I'm going to sit over here and watch the rest of Classic Truck Rescue, so I'm going to do that. I have a bath this afternoon as well, so I'm going to have a soak in a bath. have a general quick tidy up in here and clear that bench so I can uh, do some more work on the hospital, and that is it. So I'll talk to you later on today. It works. Not beeping for some reason though. It is meant to beep when you press the set buttons, but it isn't, so I don't know. Maybe there's a loose connection there. I did have two segments not working on two of the digits, but um that turned out to be a short. The one thing when you've got a big enough soldering arm like that, it seems to be quite uh, easy to get shorts. Um, I'll go through with the magnifier again and just make sure um, the buzzer isn't short anywhere. Actually, I can't see any more shorts looking at it like this. So I don't know why that's not working. Not that that bothers me. I only wired it for the clock anyway. It's meant to run 5 volts. I've got it on a 6 volt battery, but it works. And... 
moment. This works as well. I need two hands. <laughs> See if I can just get this held on the battery as well. Wires around the right way. I'm just was a short on the bottom of that as well. I'm going to have to invest in a smaller, physically smaller soldering iron. Well, that's running away. I wonder how long that battery would last running that. run up from a 5 volt USB power supply I suppose, you know, I could connect a USB cable to that. Uh, and I bet you can't guess what the good old British weather's been doing. Okay, so, that was a success, I'm happy with that. Bit of troubleshooting, I accidentally uh, shorted out a couple of joints, but my soldering has definitely gotten better on this second one, so I definitely need more circuits. As they say, practice makes perfect, so... No, I was just thinking about that buzzer. Yeah. I did change the tip on the soldering iron in the end for uh, that one, just because it's got that nice point, and I could actually get into the um, tighter spots easier. And I actually did this systematically. I did the stuff on the inside first, so the IC socket and the resistor strip first. Then went to the end, and started on the inside and worked out. Switch, I worked down, and so on. Um, just so I didn't accidentally catch a solder joint I'd already done. Because <laughs> you don't want to undo your work. So I did, you do need a bit of a system, or a bit of method, whatever you want to call it. Yep, it's working. I'm happy with that. Right, so I haven't actually done anything I've wanted to do today. It's coming up to 20 past 4 and I've done absolutely fuck all. Apart from sit here uh, soldering. Um, I did bring a spare speaker through just in case I broke that one. Um, which reminds me I've got to take this camera down and uh, see if I can get that footage off of there. That's going to be fun, isn't it? And I'm going to need some batteries in the camera. Here we go. Two batteries. Uh, do I need to take the whole power supply, including the power... Ah, no I didn't. Don't. I can just... Uh, Unplug it and take that bit. I didn't want to unplug the bloody lead and everything as well. Right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to be peckish. I need to go take a pee. Uh, then... Mm. Oh, that's the only thing I did. I did the roof on my Lego house over there. I did use the one by 2 bricks in the end that came with the parcel. I just... Um, modified the inside of the roof to give it a bit of extra support. Oh, wunderbar. It's raining. No surprise there. That's 
some point in 2016, Britain may actually get to summer. I'm not sure what point in 2016 that's going to be, because we've only got like, well, we're coming up to the end of June. Oh, July, August, you know, a couple of months at least. At least a month of sunshine would be nice. This has got to be the shittiest I made that floor well, didn't I? I've lost a bit. Anyway, this must be the shittiest summer ever. <laughs> I smell someone burning toast. <laughs> right, let's that. I left the bloody Canon camera on charge all night. Oops. So I presume a device like that will just cut off once it's uh, done. And yes, I've got a sore finger, not because I burnt myself with the soldering iron. No, I stabbed myself with the bloody circuit board. Quick, man. Let's see if I can actually find a screw. And um thing rather than a bolt, because I haven't got a bolt in it at the moment. Right, so I'll have footage on there. It's all one take, so in theory I've just got to transfer footage to computer from that computer to this computer. Should have an S D card. Yes, so I can use the sixteen gig one, that'll do. I'm sure I've got some more missing somewhere. Let me chuck them in here, did I? That SIM card. What have we got? 128, 32 meg, 8 meg. Wow. Two hundred and fifty six is all small. I don't even know why I'll keep them, to be honest. Use that one. That's the safest bet, I think. bloody tools in the tub, but I want them in the tub. I just want all my computer, computer gizmos and things and memory sticks. So um, that's actually an idea. I could use memory sticks to get it. <laughs> Easier than using um, a memory card anyway. Right, so this and this I've got to go through here. I guess Nemo wants his dish topped up. Uh, well I have to say, building those circuits, I actually enjoyed doing it. It was quite therapeutic. To sit there, you know, blocking out everything I'd even notice it was raining, to be honest, until I'm done. <laughs> well, I think Nemo's knocked me radio aerial down. Let's move that. Right. Did I leave the power on at the wall and just turn it off there? I did. So we turn that on. Oh, one of them was on. And the Sony is the one we want. I built that one as a Windows XP gaming rig and I still haven't put any games on it. God, oh, pardon me. And that's just two random. Dell XP machines in there. That I've got to sort through. Some tapes in there I probably don't want. Windows 7 64 bit. Windows 7 Ultimate 64 bit. Spare mouse. A bloody PS1 game here. Right. Car. That's loading. Why have I still got these? <laughs> oh, horrible things. Too much energy used. I don't know if I've got speakers wired up to this. <laughs> uh, I can't 
can't remember which ones I hooked, I don't think I hooked up audio to that. Okay, I did! I don't remember that desktop background being on there. That uh, unused one, oh, no. right. Uh, I'm going to go and take a piss and uh, find up the necessary cables for the camera and uh, see if I can transfer stuff. Right. I'm going to take this one as well, actually, just in case. <laughs> you never know. Right. Talk to you later. Okay, I'm back after um, having to piss around at the shed door for an hour because uh, one of the brackets for the runners did actually come away from the door, or it come away enough, so it's just dragging along the floor. But I've done what I can for now. Anyway, I just saw this. And I thought it was interesting enough. America commonly have these. Uh, intersections, traffic light controlled. And this is actually asking which is better, and in the UK and other parts of Europe actually we have these roundabouts. And it is asking which is better. Now, I'm going to say roundabouts, not just because they're British, but I'm going to explain why. With an intersection like this, and we do have them in cities over here, in fact cities are full of frickin' traffic lights. Uh, the problem is, in this case, as you can see, it's two-way traffic. You can see that's the back end of the bus, and that car's going that way. So you've got traffic going across here, while that light is on green. This lot, going in that direction, can't go anywhere, because it's on red. So they've come to a complete standstill. Which, of course, means they could be sitting there for, well, however long it takes for the lights to change. With a roundabout, the advantage with this is traffic flow is almost continuous. Um, sometimes you have to stop, but if you do, you're not stopped for long before there's a gap for you to keep going around. Um... You wouldn't be stopped for as long as you would be at a traffic light controlled intersection. So, to me, I will always go for a roundabout as being the quickest. Because um, roundabouts are actually quite popular over here. In North Walsham, I can think of... And yes, in case you're wondering, there is a South Walsham as well. Um, I'm not actually that far from here, to be honest. Well, I'll say that, probably about half an hour, 45 minutes away. Ish. <laughs> uh, depending on the driver and depending on traffic. But yeah. I can think of... I know there's one, what we call a mini roundabout, which is just basically a white circle painted on the road rather than a big raised up area like this one actually I think there's two but we've only got three sets of traffic lights two main ones on the main what we call the bypass and what was the other one? A one small set at the bottom of town. That is it. You won't really find many traffic lights in a little town like this. But in seas, there is roundabouts in seas, but for some reason traffic lights are still a preferred option in seas. I think in most scenarios it's because it's better. Or more practical, I should say. Um, especially if there isn't the room to put a roundabout in. Because um, roundabouts can't go everywhere. Sometimes there's just not enough room to put one in, so traffic lights 
啊，别聊。<laughs> the footage did uh, transfer to the um, PC. The audio didn't for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know. If there was audio there. The camera recorded audio. But obviously, to record, you've got to play the tape in the video camera. And then in the program on the PC, you just hit record. Like you would if you're copying VHS tapes from one video player to another. That's old technology, that one. Uh, uh, oh, pardon me. A bit of wind tonight. Um, yeah, and of course, the camera's got a speaker. This one doesn't. This doesn't have a speaker. It can play video back, but it doesn't have a speaker. I don't see the point in that myself, but... Uh, Maybe because this actually hasn't got the room to put a speaker in, thinking about it. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so I could hear audio while I was recording it to the um, PC, but uh, I don't know, it's probably a cable issue, I've got a feeling. I may not have connected it properly, so the, the computer may have already been picking up the... Um, the um, video. But, uh, I'll give it another go tomorrow. Oh dear. Hmm. Anyway, I did have fun building these today. You will get to see the uh, rather dodgy video I made of putting this together. Um, I definitely did a better soldering job on the clock. But then again, I changed the bit. Because for this doorbell, I was using... If I just pull up out of there. I was using one of the... Or this bit. Uh, but for the clock, I actually used that bit. That way up. You know, so I could just use the... Get in there with the point sort of thing. I also found that it was actually a better help at getting between contacts and whatnot, so... Yeah, there's a few dodgy joints on here. The buzz, the um, buzzer isn't working, but I've actually found one of the contacts off the IC that comes down through a resistor to the transistor to the buzzer is actually shorting out on the resistor. The row of resistor. Um, yeah, I think that's what that black thing is hiding in that gap, and like a resistor bridge thing is shorting out to this first terminal, so. That could be why the buzzer's not working, so I'll sort that out tomorrow. It's not too important, because I don't want to use the alarm on it anyway, but rather than r leave it and risk it doing some damage, I'll sort it out, and I'll find a 5-volt power supply for it. And, uh, well, it would be nice to find a way of uh, mounting it up on the wall. Yeah, I haven't even peeled the um, protective film off the uh, LED display. I did at first get um, one segment in this digit not working and one in that one not working, but I fixed that. That was a short between a couple of contacts on the back. Do with um, I really need to use less solder on my joints. I think I'm putting a little bit too much. Um, but like I said practice makes perfect for years since I've done anything like this. But the fact I can actually power this up and set the clock and actually have a clock ticking <laughs> is good enough for me. I have done some pretty decent joints on this one that I am happy with. So, yeah, can't complain. Like I said, I'll find a, maybe find an old USB cable I could uh, cut in half or something and just connect into there. Then use one of those USB plugs that plug in a socket as a power source. 
I shouldn't think that would take uh, much current, so I think that, if that overheats the USB plug, then the USB plug's a piece of shit. <laughs> Not worth using. So, yeah. But, uh, it's quite therapeutic just sitting here, you know. I did watch a video on YouTube while I was assembling this from a YouTuber I watch who'd already done this. He's bought the same clock actually and assembled it. Um, just to make sure I got some of the parts around the right way because I couldn't remember. But uh, the IC itself is self-explanatory. It's marked and pretty much so is the resistor bridge behind it. There's a dot on one end of it and then there's a little mark on the thing. Board itself. So there's the clock, you know, the decimal points at the bottom. Electrolytic caps are, um, well, if you've got a black one like this, then the blue, blue grey coloured stripe is the negative, so that's one of the few components. Actually, I do believe there's only four components on here that it would have mad. If you'd put the display on the wrong way, it would have just, um, I don't know, might have read upside down. I'm not actually sure if it would have made any difference, to be honest. Uh, might, well, actually, yeah, I think it would have read upside down. So, if we count the screen, it's one, two, three, four, five components on here that have to go in a certain way. Buzzer, no, switches, top, bottom, contacts. So they sort of kind of do, but I actually found they'll only go in the holes one way anyway. Crystal for the clock, no. The ceramic caps and resistors, nope. There's no diodes on that one. There's a couple of zenas on this one. I only know there's zenas because um, I watched Julian build this. I did get one of the resistors round the opposite way to the other three, but it doesn't matter. Resistors don't matter. It's just it looks weird, you know. I've got three all facing the same way, and then one hidden between these caps and the IC. But that's facing the other direction. <laughs> but like I said, that don't matter. Really? <laughs> yeah, I had to slide my pants off because uh, my legs were driving me up the wall again. I've actually calmed down now. I could uh, put them back on. <sighs> oh. And uh, while I was outside, when I came back from Lidl's, I bought up um, Grandpa, my blue rally. Don't know what rally he is because I can't find the sticker. It's all, well... It's there, but it's all too badly worn. I can't read it. Um, you know, that blue one I did recently. That I nicknamed, or called Grandpa. Um, <laughs> first, his front light wasn't working at all. So I got that working. Then when I took it downstairs, his rear light decided it didn't want to work. So I put a new bulb in that, then it worked. And now his front light has decided it wants to be as much use as... I don't know, but I think holding a matchstick would be um, um, a lot greater use than that headlight at the minute. Because it's so dim, it's indicating, and it's quite possibly a bad ground, because it ground, the of my lights ground through the frame. I have got a video on the channel that I did uh, whew, last year uh, regarding the wiring of dynamo lights. Uh, so, I'm going to test that theory tomorrow. Looking at that sky, that's going to piss down. Look how dark that is over there. Yay! <sighs> Welcome to England. We drive boats. This is like SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> you come to England, you don't drive cars, you drive boats. And I'm going to have to report that. Be, uh, zebra crossing the beacon because it's still having its hissy fits. 
it's not flashing as it should. Which means it's faulty, so it could uh, get worse and could go bang and start a fire on the post. Who knows? So Electronics can do weird things. They'll either fail in a catastrophic way or in an anticlimactic way. <laughs> Oh well. Yeah, so I brought the grandpa up to um, have a look at tomorrow. I'll uh, I'll run a wire from the light itself down to the body of the dynamo and uh, see if that works brighter. If it does, then it's definitely a ground fault. That may end up. Uh, running a two core wire up to the light so there's one for the light and to connect to the light and one to connect to ground. So the rear one looked like that was running absolutely fine. But whenever whenever I've done these union dynamo lights, the front one has always been the problematic one for some reason. Probably because it's further away from the power source. Usually the rear light is bolted straight to the bracket, same bracket the dynamo is on, so it's got the better earth. But uh, the front light uh, is through the frame, so yeah, I'll have um, have a look at that tomorrow. Uh, it's nearly ten o'clock. Nemo. <laughs> Bless him. <clears throat> yeah, there's not a lot going on Facebook or anything at the minute. Oh yeah, we'll have to try the Oh. Excuse me. <clears throat> but I have to try and transfer that footage again. If not, it's gonna if it doesn't work then it's gonna be disappointing. But uh what can you do? Anyway There's not even anyone I'm trying to talk to. I'm bored. What can I do this evening? Clear my doorway, maybe? <laughs> it says 5 volts on this, but I'm actually wondering if it'll work from a bit less. Because maybe it's like a 5 volts max sort of thing. Which to me seems like a bit much for that clock. I'm thinking it could run on a couple of double A's. Now, what the hell did I do with a double A battery pack to try that theory? Duh. Pardon me. Duh. Bollocks. I hope no rain's come in that window again, otherwise I'm going to have a wet pillow again. Right. Did I throw any back packs in this? I did, but we've got a terminal missing out of that one. Fuck. I think it's an old Meccano one. pack that I got from an old radio. Two, four, six double A's. That's six, seven, eight and a half volts. Nah. Though, give me that. I can just put two batteries in one of these sections and just put two wires across it and see if it lights. As if it does, <laughs> I 
and I'll sort that out as a power supply. And I'll actually leave it running until the morning and see well, I'll just leave it running and see how long the batteries last, so Well we'll just do that experiment. We'll just stick you on there. Good. See the screen reflecting on the uh tub behind. Right. One. Default time is always 12.59 for some reason, but I will just uh, prove it. I've only got those two batteries in that pack, as you can see. It's working. So I'm guessing that 5 volts is just like a 5 volt max kind of thing. Uh, I don't think it'll work for one, but I will just try out curiosity. Now, it's a 3 volts min, so if I can actually find a double A battery pack, I could actually just run that from batteries, I think. Uh, but I don't think I've got anything I can use. Hmm. I know I can get things like this on eBay. But I'm flat out broke at the moment, so it may be I could do some kind of experiment. Got an idea. It's all right. So tomorrow I can let you know if said idea is going to work. Um, like that. Around the right fucking way, you know. Right, there we go. Let's snip this one off. Did have snips on here. Where have I thrown them? Probably on that shelf somewhere. Anyway. Yeah, I just want to snip this off just to get it out of the way. I don't want to pull it off because uh, I'll damage the spring and I don't want to do that. What I want to do is trim that wire off and try and connect it in here. Because this live wire is going to that on the end here. So if I can do that, then I could actually hook up. I might remember where I put the plug that came out of that. Knowing me, I've probably just now hurled it somewhere. But yeah, and I could actually just leave that to run. Maybe just try and sort that solder joint out. And we'll get in there with the magnifying glass and double check it. Hmm. 
then so thanks a lot for watching i'm going to get on with this and uh, i'll let you know how this gets on tomorrow so